Forza Motorsport is a racing game which can be enjoyed by those using a controller or a racing wheel. And while the game does feel pretty good using both of these methods using the default settings, there are some key settings which you can change to actually improve the feel of your car while using a controller. And in this video, I'm going to run through the best controller settings, the best advanced controller settings in Forza Motorsport. The main reason on why you'd actually change your controller settings in Forza is to give you a more comfortable experience. Adjusting your button mapping can make certain tasks such as shifting gears manually with a clutch enabled much easier. And then adjusting your advanced controller settings such as your dead zones can remove any unwanted effects such as your car drifting to one side or the other. And then you can even make your inputs feel more responsive and accurate. Now before I jump into my recommended settings, I would always recommend you heading out on track before actually changing anything. This will give you a feel for how the driver feels at its default settings, what the developers intended. And then from there you can identify any areas which don't feel quite optimised or if there are any issues you may be having. Then I'd recommend using the settings that I've recommended here to see how much of a difference they make. You can then finally adjust them to create your kind of final settings based on your own feeling and your own personal preference. At the end of the day, neither the default controller settings nor my recommended settings will be perfect for everyone. Everybody has their own preference and should adjust the settings to give you the perfect experience. Now, the main controller options allow you to change certain aspects such as your button configuration. You can opt for one of the preset controller layouts or customize your own. Now you can scroll down this list of inputs and adjust any of the button configurations as required. One of the key things I'd recommend changing with your controller options would be to swap your handbrake and clutch buttons. Mapping your clutch to the A button, downshift to X and upshift to B is my preference, as this lets me easily lean across the clutch button with my thumb whilst pressing either the downshift or upshift button. And this results in almost perfect manual shifts with a clutch every time. Now the advanced controller options is where the meat of the settings lie and these give you much more control over individual areas over how your controller behaves. You can adjust every part of your controller input to change how the triggers and certain inputs behave without affecting other areas. Now every input including the steering, acceleration, deceleration etc all have an inside and outside dead zone setting. These dead zones can be used to combat any input being accidentally applied while say resting your finger on a trigger or they can be used to make an input more or less sensitive. Now I want to quickly touch on what the dead zone actually does for all of these settings before I jump into the specific settings I'm using. Now the dead zone for any input has both inside and outside value which can be changed independently. Think of this as a scale from 0 to 100. The minimum value represents how much input you need to apply to a trigger before anything is actually registered in game. And then the maximum value sets the maximum amount of input required to reach full in game input. Leaving your dead zone at zero on the inside means that any slight touch of your trigger will register an input in game. Now this is ideal if you want your trigger to be responsive. However, if you rest a finger on a trigger, the weight of your finger may accidentally register a small amount of input. To combat this, you can raise the inside dead zone to around 5% and this will eliminate any input from the first 5% of trigger movement. This is normally recommended, especially on the steering axis, as increasing the dead zone can remove any tendency for your controller and your car to pull to one side when traveling in a straight line. Now the outside dead zone is an indicator for the maximum amount of input required to reach full throttle, full braking or full steering lock. This also applies to the clutch and handbrake as well, but this is a little bit less important there. Reducing this down from 100 to say 90% means that your trigger will become more responsive. Once you hit 90% of pressure applied to your trigger in game, you'll then be registering 100% input. Lowering the outside dead zone even more can further increase the overall responsiveness of any input. Now I'm going to run through my recommended settings for Forza Motorsport and to give you a little bit of an explanation to why I've chosen these settings. For the steering dead zone, I typically set the inside value to around 4 or 5. This will combat any unwanted drifting to one side or the other. And when driving straight, you don't want to have to be correcting your car's path, so bumping this up to 3, 4, maybe 5 will eliminate that. 
I then set the outside steering dead zone to around 95%. This means I can reach full steering lock a little quicker and easier compared to setting it to 100%. Also, if you have a tendency to push your analog stick ever so slightly up or down while applying full directional input, it may not re necessarily register 100% in-game input. So lowering this setting to around 90-95% will ensure you're always reaching full steering lock even if your directional input is ever so slightly off. For the acceleration settings, I generally leave the inside dead zone to 0%. This means that as soon as I touch the throttle trigger, I'll start applying the throttle in game. This helps get the power down quickly and easily, and it also keeps the widest throttle range. You can increase the inside dead zone if you don't want your throttle to feel quite as sensitive, but what this does do is it narrows the window between minimum and maximum values and this will make the throttle a touch harder to control if you're modulating pressure, especially if you're racing without traction control enabled. For the outside dead zone, I want it close to 100% to keep the input range as wide as possible. I do, however, lower it to around, say, 98%, just to ensure that I'm always applying full throttle when I want to. If you have a, a sticky trigger or a slightly older controller, if you don't press the trigger all the way to 100% consistently, you may not actually be accelerating as much as you can in game. So lowering the outside dead zone just a little bit always ensures we're hitting 100% throttle input. For the deceleration, the main thing with this setting is to ensure you're not accidentally applying any braking input when you don't want to. To combat this, I increase the inside dead zone a couple of points away from zero to ensure that the weight of my finger isn't accidentally applying any braking input. I then lower the braking dead zone to around 98% for the exact same reason as my throttle dead zone. I simply want to ensure that I'm always applying 100% brake input when I fully press the trigger and I'm not leaving any braking performance on the table. Again, the same as the throttle input, you'll want the range here between the inside and outside dead zone to be as large as possible. This will allow for maximum control while modulating your brake pressure, especially if you race with ABS off. Now both the clutch and handbrake settings are very easy to set up. Simply leave them at 0 for the inside and 100 for the outside. Both of these inputs when racing with a controller are button presses. So there really is no modulation between 0 and 100 or on and off. They're either engaged when the button's pressed or they're not engaged when you're not pressing the button. Unless you're racing with a wheel and pedal set that uses a physical handbrake or clutch, I'd recommend just leaving these at either default or 0 and 100. And then we've got the vibration setting. This adjusts the intensity of your controller vibration. Increasing this will make the vibration and rumble that you feel in your controller more pronounced. But if you crank this right up to 100%, it can become more distracting rather than helpful. I tend to leave my vibration setting at around 60%, which provides vibration feedback enough to be helpful, such as when your tires are pushing the limits of grip and about to break traction, but it isn't so intense that the vibrations are overwhelming me. This can be set more based on your own personal preferences setting, but I'd always recommend keeping it at or above kind of 50%. This ensures that you feel some of the helpful vibration feedback that is available. Next, you've got the self-align steering, which I leave at around 100%. This will automatically create your steering input if you aren't applying any input with the analog stick and your car starts to step out of control. The game will apply a bit of steering input to try and correct your, the path and the direction of your car. And those are the only settings you need to worry about when racing Forza with a controller. There are more settings which affect racing wheels, but I'll touch on them in a different video. Let me know in the comments below what Forza Motorsport controller settings you're using and also how you're finding the game if you played it so far. I plan on releasing more Forza content over the coming days. So if you like this video, if you want to be alerted when new videos drop, hit that subscribe button and the alert bell. But for now guys, I'll see you on track.